tired somehow. So I was just saying, you know, drawing angles, knowing the difference between positive and negative angles, that's probably stuff that a lot of people knew going into the course, but it's still material we've lectured on, so we'll still test it. And converting from radians to degrees or from degrees to radians, that's sort of one of those things you need to be able to do. Um, again, and I mean, the way you do it is that there are two pi radians in 360 degrees. So one radian is 360 divided by two pi, or one degree is two pi divided by 360. Um, I feel like I might have uh, started to say that wrong, but what I'm, uh, because, because these things are equal, you can divide to find one radian in terms of degrees. And then if you have, you know, 47 radians or whatever, you would just multiply 47 by that. Or you can Divide the other way to find that one degree is pi over 180 radians. And then if you have how whatever, some number of degrees, you just take that <clears throat> and multiply by pi over 180 to get radians. So finding areas and finding lengths of arcs, I mean, both these problems are extremely plug and play. Um, I guess I reserve the right to try to ask, you know, something maybe more interesting or like to try to to maybe turn the arc length into a word problem. So how someone's on a Ferris wheel, how far do they travel or whatever. But these are formulas you should know, at least for test one, or if you don't want to, formulas you can put on your note card, I guess. And then this is pretty uh, routine, especially, you know, if I'm, I hope that everyone just has um, sine, cosine, tangent memorized by now. Um, you should not have memorized secant, cosecant, and cotangent. But once you found these three, you know, one over the sine, one over the cosine, one over the tangent to get the other. So um, on this particular problem, I gave you all three sides. If I wanted to be difficult, you know, I could give you two sides and then you'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side before you could get all of the trig identities. And then this is sort of some kind of word problem involving right triangle trig. This is sort of the classic word problem. You know an angle of elevation and you know a distance and you want to find the other distance. But of course, there's no guarantee that whatever is on the test will look quite like this. 
I mean, maybe maybe you could be in a situation where you know the hypotenuse. Like if you tie a rope to something and you can are standing a ways away from it, you're raising a tent or something, and then you'd have to use a different trig function. But something like that. In this particular case, it's going to be the tangent. You want the opposite side, you know the adjacent side, the tangent's what relates those. Or I guess the cotangent, but your calculator doesn't have a cotangent button, so the tangent's better. Then I like to have a few kind of open-ended stuff, something like 13. Do you just understand these definitions? How would you do 14? You know the sine and you want the cosine. Could you do wouldn't it be like one over one fifth? One over one fifth? Yeah. Um that's you would find the cosecant oh. that way. The cosecant is one over the side. So you could just do that using division. So does well. I was going to say classic, but really the only way that we can relate the sine and the cosine is the Pythagorean identity. So if we know what the sign is, if we know the sign is one fifth, this is one fifth squared, plus the cosine of theta squared equals one. You can get this square by itself. And now here's an easy error to make. I think we're, real, we're used to thinking, you know, the square and the square root cancel each other out. But as I say, this is a mistake because an equation like that actually has two solutions. And if you were therefore wondering why, I'm not trying to trick people. I'm not giving students information that I know they're not going to need. So, I tell, tell you that alpha is in the second quadrant. So what does that tell you? Which of these two answers is the correct one? The negative is exactly correct. In the second quadrant, the cosine is negative because the x coordinates are negative. Um, using reference angles. I mean, it seems, it's always seemed a little specialized, but this is really classic trigonometry. Promptly. And I guess, half of the work is sort of knowing 
knowing what the angle you're looking at is, um, what quadrant is 7 pi over 6 in? The third. the third is exactly correct because this is pi over six, seven pi over six. You have to go an additional pi over six into the third quadrant. And then that tells you that the sine and the cosine are going to be the same as the reference angle, except that maybe one of them will be positive or one of them will be negative, or, you know, the signs might be different. Signs, S-I-G-N, this positivity and negativity might be different. So, This is a kind of lengthy problem because you're asked for the tangent and you don't actually know what uh, the tangent of pi over six is. So, I mean, especially if I'm letting you bring in a note card, just asking for the sines and cosines of pi over six or pi over three or pi over four seems a little pointless. Um, making it the tangent gives the problem a little to it. Um, so should this be, should this be positive or negative? Positive. Uh, yep. Yeah. You're, you're, you sound hesitant, but you're correct. So the tangent is the sine over the cosine, and both the sine and the cosine are negative there. So the negative signs cancel out and make that a positive. And then, speak of the devil, the very next problem, find the tangent of pi over 6. Again, um, this isn't something you memorized, or if you did, it wasn't because I told you to, but you know the sine of pi over 6, and you know the cosine of pi over 6, so you can find the sine divided by the cosine. And 17, again, um, period, what we mostly, we really drill down on period in chapter eight, but by chapter seven, we've already discussed the idea that the sine is periodic, the cosine is periodic, the period is two pi, and that's the amount of time it takes for things to start to repeat. And 18 to 21, I could complicate this a little. I mean, I tell you the sine and the cosine, but because of the Pythagorean identity, I could give a problem. The sine is this, the angles in such and such a quadrant find all of the trig values. In any event, this is, do you remember what the tangent secant, cotangent, and cosecant are? So, that's the material for the first test. I don't think there should be surprises. Again, I mean, I reserve the right to complicate things slightly, to 
you know, instead of just saying arc length, we can go back to the Ferris wheel and we can say, well, how far does it travel in such and such a time or whatever. But, but this is the math material that's being covered. So, I mean, in terms of, like I've said, you can bring a note card. You really ought to know the, the definition of the sine, cosine, tangent in terms of right triangles. That's material you really shouldn't need to look up every time it occurs. You should know the unit circle definition of the sine and the cosine. Um, if you don't have these special angles memorized, those can be note card stuff, but I'll assume that you know it. Um, you see, find the exact value that you know, you'll have a calculator on the test, but your calculator will give you some decimal approximation. It's not what I'm asking for here. Similarly, find the exact value. Um, you should know what, you know, pi over four, pi over three, pi over six. You should know what those are in degrees. So if I took this problem and modified it and asked you what the sine of 210 degrees was, you should be able to figure that out. Reference angle of 30 degrees, same type of thing. Otherwise, I mean, I'd really like to... Uh, like to see this test go well. I mean, I don't want to trivialize it or pretend that it would, you know, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with this, I'm not saying it will be easy, but you know, if you, how many problems are there? There are about 20 problems and about 10 of those are, do you remember these right triangle definitions? Do you remember that the, how the tangent and secant and all of that are defined? So I think everyone can do fine on this test. If you, um, I don't have scheduled office hours Thursday, but if you discover that you have questions as you are working through this, you can shoot me an email and we can certainly meet up. Otherwise, I will see you Friday.